A2 further maths, rectangular distribution. What I'd like you to do is just have a go at seeing if you can calculate the A, the B, and the C value in each of those three questions, please. Okay, so you want to pause it, have a go at all three of them, and then play it when you're ready. Okay, so let's see where you how you did then. So the A value, B value, and C value are just constants. So really, this is some constant amount between one to four. What does that A have to equal? And so hopefully you figured out that, well, if it's one to four, that's going to be three across. What does it need to go up to? It would have to go up to a third because three times a third must be equal to one. If that was enough hint to work out the other two, pause it, have a go yourselves. OK, so let's look at the second one then. So this time we know the height is quarter. So it's going to be a straight line going across a quarter. How far will it need to do? So a quarter times what would get you one? It would be a quarter times four. So two plus four is where the six comes from. Same idea with this one, except this time it is um, the starting position rather than the end. So that's going to be seven. What will C have to be to start with? Well, it will be down the negatives because you have to have something something times a seven, so that's seven. So it's something down the negatives, and that's why it's minus four. Okay. So well done if you figured all those out. It's not, I wouldn't say it's overly difficult, but it is important to recognise that these are what we call rectangular distributions. Because if you plot any of these PDFs just here, then what you're going to end up with is just a nice simple rectangle, one that goes across with the probability of third from one to four. Okay, right, what I'd like you to do is see if you can write down the constant K in terms of A and B. So for a general rule for a rectangular distribution. So pause it, have a think yourselves what K value is going to be in terms of A and B. Okay, so let's see what you got. So you know it's a rectangular distribution. So we know that it's going to look like that between the two variables a and b. What does k have to be? Well, the difference here is going to be b minus a. So it's b minus a, just there, times by k equals 1. We know the height is k, and we know that's b minus a. Those two multiplied together must equal an area of 1. Okay, so what does k have to be then? k will equal 1 over b minus a. Now that rule just there is your formula for rectangular distribution. Okay, if a probability distribution function f of x is a constant value, then the PDF is defined as a rectangular distribution. The examiner will expect you to spot them, the examiner will expect you to be able to use them and be able to use the formulas quite quickly from them. Okay, so it might seem quite simplistic thinking, well, isn't that really easy? I've, had, I've dealt with ones that are a lot harder with this, with x squared and x cubed and all sorts of stuff. Yes, in some ways it is more straightforward because it's just a nice easy rectangle. But sometimes you'll be surprised how many people don't spot it and they start making life more complicated than it needs to be. OK, right, if you haven't copied it down, pause it. Gives you a chance to get that down, including the sketch. What does the CDF look like? Well, because it's uh, a straight line there, okay, a straight horizontal line, that means that if you imagine that you integrated this one over whatever the number is, then the answer is going to go to x over whatever the number is. So we're going to have a line go straight up, starting at zero just there, going up to one just here. So there we go. That's what it looks like. And interestingly, the gradient of that line will be one up and b minus a across. So the gradient is 1 over b minus a. So a cumulative distribution function f of rectangle is always a linear function, always a linear function with a gradient of 1 over b minus a. OK, right, again, pause it if you haven't got all your notes down. OK, rectangular distribution is often referred to as uniform distribution. And if you remember from last year, um, I'm sure your teachers would have talked to you about when they had discrete random variables, for example, rolling a dice and talked about it being uniform because the probability of getting one, two, three, four, five, and six on a regular six sided dice is uniform. And it's the same with this rectangular distribution or uniform distribution. 
it means the probability is distributed uniformly within that integral. Okay, not within that set. Uh, just be wary, that is an alternative way of writing that. They mean the same thing. Okay, the square brackets mean it's included. Circular brackets means not equal to. Okay, so just be aware that is set notation, not some sort of coordinate, which is exactly what I just said then. Okay. Can you work out the expected value of the probability distribution function? So you might want to grab your notes out. How do you work out the expected value for a PDF? Once you've got your notes out, have a go and then replay it once you're ready. Okay, so I hope you had a go yourselves. So what do we get? Well, we know that if we want to work out the expected value, we use this formula here. Starting at the lowest value, calculating up to the highest value, multiply it by x times by your function. So the expected value is always x times the function over the whole of the part. Okay, so that's the first thing I'm going to do. Calculate x times the function. So it's x over b minus a. Now, 1 over b minus a is a constant. And remember, you can take constants outside of integrals. They don't need to stay inside. All right, so you can take that outside the integral because b and a are constant values. And the only thing that's getting integrated is the x. Remember, you can't take an x out because you're integrating in terms of x. So be wary of that. All right, this bit, though, I can work out. It's going to be x squared over 2 between b and a. So I can put down the, the higher value, okay, and take away the lower value. So I've got my b squared over 2, I've got my a squared over 2. This part I can put together and calculate the difference of two squares. All right, b squared minus a squared, difference of two squares. What, why would I bother with that? Because if you haven't spotted it, that and that will cancel out. And so your end answer will be a plus b over 2. So the expected value in rectangular distribution is always add the two limits together and half it. Now in some ways that should make sense. Where have you seen that figure, that equation before? The midpoint. Add the two values together and half it gets you the midpoint, which is exactly what you would expect to get. Okay, pause if you need to. Okay, this is just re-emphasizing what I just said. So what is that expected value on the graph? There we go. Your expected value is the midpoint of A and B. Okay, it's smack bang in the middle. That's exactly what you expect. All right, same idea again though, but this time try working out the variance and the standard deviation. So again, can you pause, use your formulas, do what you need to do. This one's a little bit longer. Play when you're ready. OK, so let's see how you got on. So the variance of EX squared minus EX all squared. That's the variance formula you recognize, hopefully. Now, EX squared, I can work out because that's just the integration of X squared F of X. That one I just did a minute ago. EX was A plus B over 2. OK, so let me deal with EX squared first. So there's my EX squared. Same idea as before, this is a constant, so I can take that out. So really, I'm just integrating x squared. The integration of x squared is x cubed over 3. So I can put my b value into that, I can put my a value into it, and I get this. Now, this is not so easy as before, because now you've got the difference of two cubes. Okay, now the difference of two cubes works out as that formula just there. Okay, so it works out as that formula just there. You can check it yourselves, definitely works. The a and the b in these kind of bits cancel out, leaving you the a cubed and the b cubed. So why have I done that? Well, because that and that cancel out, leaving you a squared plus a b plus b squared over three. So that is what my e x squared is. So I could substitute that into that bit. Okay, that's what I'm going to do to start with. Take away e x, which is a plus b over two. All squared. So let me neaten this up, see what I get. So I've got 
a plus ab plus b squared over 3 take away a squared plus 2ab plus b squared over 4 so quite similar uh, again now I'll put them together I need to multiply by um, 4 and 3 to cancel it make them a bit easier which I've done there okay now I can put them together then I'm going to get 4a squared take away 3a squared which is a squared I'm going to get 4ab plus um, minus 6ab careful minus 2ab and 4b squared minus 3b squared is b squared all over 12. notice the top bit a squared minus 2ab plus b can be written as b minus a all squared okay so b minus a all squared right or a minus b all squared whichever way around it is but why have i picked it that way around you might be thinking surely you do a and b is because that's what comes from the original okay so that will be the one that's in your formula book so in this case var x equals b minus a squared and the standard deviation of that which is the square root is going to be b minus a over root 20. okay so let's have a look at a quick question on this then so there's a standard question give you a chance to write it down in your notebook um, the weight of a random bag of crisps modeled as rectangular distribution so the moment you're seeing those words you can figure out what the k value is the moment you see those words you should be thinking about the expected value formula and the variance formula which we just covered uh, find the probability of picking a bag of crisps weighing less than 16 grams so how am i going to do that so the first thing i'm going to do if you haven't paused it or if you haven't got it down just pause it is find the probability of k so how can i find the probability of k well it's going to equal one over b minus a so i can work it out by just taking the difference of those two and therefore get k equaling two okay so the probability of two notice it's over a smaller region than one which is why it's two so there we go difference between those two is a half difference between that is two so two times a half is one perfect now find the probability using integration now you can use integration or you could just use a bit of common sense we'll come back to that in a second so if you used integration and said i'm going to integrate less than 16 between 15 15.7 and 16 substitute it all in dun 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 you could use your calculator out comes 0.6 of course the other option is just using a rectangle we can clearly see that it's too high it's 16 minus 15.7 there so therefore 0.6 will be your answer right, now you've done that have a look at the exercise on 4h on page 778 gives you a lot of different questions including using the formulas for the mean the variance those types of things just make sure that you don't underestimate the difficulty of it sometimes the examiners can ask you quite nasty questions on these things and there's this expectation that as soon as you see the words rectangular or spot it in a pdf then you should be thinking about using those formulas